going to go ahead and get started, Coach. I'm going uh, to no introduce you, and uh, we're going to let you take it away. So, uh, all right, guys, we have Coach Chris Towery with us today, uh, head coach at Sulphur High School. Uh, coach Towery has coached at University of Houston, University of Louisiana Lafayette. Um, he was the OC at Redemptress here in Louisiana in 2005 uh, when they won a state championship. Um, he's also been an offensive coordinator at three Texas 6A schools uh, and was recently uh, the OC at Tyler Junior College before taking the sulfur job. Is that correct, Coach? That is correct. That is correct. Awesome, um, awesome. Coach, I'm ready to talk RPOs. Let's talk RPOs. Well, let's get into it here a little bit. I'm going to hit share screen. Got a little PowerPoint um, thing to go on to right here. Okay, so we'll start off at the top. Can everybody see that? Yes, sir. Okay, you know, just a little little deal here. You know, one of the things we talk about at our place is love the process. Uh, heard the Matt Campbell from Iowa State say that not too long ago. It's on the back of our off-season shirts. Uh, you know, we, we, we try to press that a point to them every day. And uh, the other thing we talk about a lot is the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Um, you know, just, just some things that we press a point. We try to, try to get them to, you know, understand that the way they act outside the classroom is – outside the, the football room is the, the, probably the way they're going to act when they're playing football. If they can't do their schoolwork right, then at some point they're probably not going to do something on the football field right. So we, we just try to stress those things and, and get them to buy into it. You know, we're at a great place, a uh, great group of coaches around uh, around me. Uh, really excited about this first you know, year. Uh, you know, I think everybody knows we went through a whole lot, you know, with the hurricane and stuff, as did other people this last year. Uh, really a tribute to our guys. The only 5A school in southwest Louisiana decided decided to play football. So, uh, you know, we're uh, we're really in year one and a half, if you want to put it like that. But let's talk about a little RPOs here. So, you know, why why uh, the value of RPOs and attachments? We kind of break our RPOs into two different categories. We use the word RPOs and attachments. Some of the reasons why we use them, uh, you know, conflict defenders. You guys that are defensive guys know – and especially second and third level defenders have multiple responsibilities uh, in most defensive systems. So coverage responsibilities and run fits can be put into conflict by forcing defenders to have to play both in a single play. Um, second thing, light and heavy boxes. Your ability to package plays together to attack what the defense is giving you on any given snap. You, you know, you're not going to get the same look twice in a row sometimes. So having package plays to be able to handle that light or heavy box is always a good thing. Uh, gift and leverage throws. You know, this is big for me being a quarterback guy. Allowing the QB to have easy throws because of the alignment of the defense is a confidence booster for any quarterback, and it can help him get into a rhythm with easy reads and completions uh, instead of standard drop back passing, which we do a lot of too. But this is a good way for a young guy to kind of put his eyes on one thing. Do I have that gift throw over there? Okay, I'm going to take it. I don't have it. Then let's do this. Uh, run relief. Uh, if the box has more defenders and the offense can block or, you know, if the defense is bringing pressure, RPOs are a good relief against both of those defensive situations. Guys bringing pressure off the edge, throw a key screen out there. Um, you know, uh, getting the safeties down in the box, trying to bring pressure from high, throw a glance RPO through the middle of the field. There's things you can do to alleviate those kind of things. Uh, explosive plays, you know, putting defenders in conflict can help exploit space and create space, uh, leaving room for athletes to, to add yards after the catch. Put a defender in conflict, you get it in one of your best players, the ball in space, good chance for him to turn that into something big. And then obviously six, playmakers. Um, you know, simple reads to get the ball in the hands of your playmakers. Nothing better than finding ways to get the uh, ball to the guys that do the most with it. You know, players, not plays. Um, you know, Remember Nick Saban saying one time when he was at uh, Michigan State, he saw back in the 90s, he saw Penn State throw a, a screen down on the goal line that he didn't think was very red zone worthy at the time. And he said he thought it was the stupidest thing he'd ever seen except the guy scored. And it kind of dawned on him a little bit, you know, sometimes we got to think about players and not play. So this is an easy way to get them in the hands of those guys. For us, RPOs versus attachments, okay, kind of what the difference is. Uh, in our teaching of these concepts, we put them into different categories. RPOs, for our teaching purposes, is a pre-snap identification of a leverage or gift throw. Where do we have a leverage throw? Where do we have a gift throw? 
that kind of thing, or the relief of a heavy box or pressure by the defense. We're going to get it out. There's not going to be a big time fake with the back or any kind of mesh point or anything like that. Most of the time we do what we call prey faking. We'll catch it, we'll lean our shoulders into the prey fake, and then boom, spit the ball out there. Attachments on the other hand, for us and our teaching, and this is the way we do it, we're not saying it's right or wrong, it's just how we do it, is um, you know a post-stat movement of a conflict defender or defenders. Uh, to us, attachments are double and triple option mentality. So it's kind of bringing the spread offense type deal back to the old school triple option type mentality. You know, on our C gap and D gap attachments, we actually, when we're teaching our kids, use the word pitch key or pull key on those things, talking to them. And when we're going over those things in film, we tell them, hey, here's your pull key, here's your pitch key. So it's something post snap. Usually there's a full ride involved in it. Quarterback's putting the ball in the belly of a running back. He's eyes on a defender, boom, doing something with it post-snap after the movement of that defender. Now, I've got film example of a lot of these kind of things, and we'll get into that here in a second. So execution, you know, how do we teach and rep the fundamentals used to get this done? Well, let me go through these drills here in a second. Here's a list of drills that we use to kind of help this out. Uh, we have a run mesh drill, obviously, that we do with the running backs, line drops. We have some warm-up stuff we call rock, rock squeeze, rock mesh. Uh, I have video of each one of these. Angle throws, our rhythm, rhythm drop drills, our phone booth drill, the ride shuffle, and then our string drill, which I didn't have on video, but it's the drill where the quarterbacks face each other. And basically, the old school drill where they're running back and forth at each other, throwing on the move. We do that a lot because we get in a lot of awkward positions throwing these, um, throwing these RPOs and attachments. So that's kind of what we put into play to get these guys done. I'll go through these last two things and I'll get into that drill video. During our special teams period, we throw a ton of RPO cuts and attachments. We take that time. If they're not involved in a special team, which none of our high, higher level quarterbacks are, and any extra receivers we have, we go down there and we pick us to a period and we throw them. You know, so we may go down there that day and we may go glance and gum, which is two things that we throw. And we just work the heck out of them. We'll flip them. You look down there, I, I said, you know, we'll, we'll call a playoff. So I may call a play. I may go 46 Paul knife. And they're working the inside part of the knife glance off of our 46 Paul, which is a, a same side power run. Um, and then we reverse it, 47 Paul knife, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So we just get a ton of reps doing that right there. Uh, I think something that we do at our place that's pretty good is uh, our perimeter drill versus our defense. It's kind of like a run skelly, uh, run skelly slash RPO perimeter screen type period. Um, we, we do a perimeter drill that allows our players on offense to focus on the moving parts of what they do without the big guys moving in front of them. So it's kind of the progression of the teaching. You throw the individual route, then you go out there and you do the perimeter drill. You got all the skill parts moving in front of you. And I have to worry about the big guys in front of them at that point. It gives them confidence to get their eyes on the movement keys and those sort of things. So that's part of our progression in teaching these. After, um, you know, after we do perimeter, there's always some sort of good on good every day. And it could be, uh, you know, our offense versus our defense. We do this with every aspect of the team, good on good, RPA, RPO is, you know, a, a period that we do, pass under pressure, down and distance situations, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to practice these RP, the RPOs and attachments full speed against our defense because you can't mimic that kind of speed versus a scout team. You're just not going to get it. So we work it against our defense. The tough thing against our defense, we play a lot of man coverage. So sometimes we don't get the looks that we need to have, but it's still good for speed. When they do jump in some zone and give us those zone looks, we, we get the looks we need. So we always do some good on good stuff. And then obviously team versus scouts, looks of the opponent that week. We'll, we'll do that in practice. Uh, always pre-practice, film and install, you know, showing the kids the fronts and coverages and pressures they're going to see. Uh, you know, the RPOs and attachments we're using that week and who we are attacking. So like our Arky. Arky RPO, we call it Arky. It's a C gap defender pull. You know, we talk to them say, Hey, C-gap defender, you're pulling off of this guy. This is the sky safety or alley defender that you're pitching off of. So it's kind of an option mentality there. And then we come back, post-practice film, uh, clean up the mistakes that, uh, you know, we had during practice that day and go over it with them and clean it up the best we can. So that's kind of how we, we lay it out and how we get a lot of reps at doing these things. 
So I'm going to jump into some of these drills real quick here. Can y'all see that screen? Yes, sir. The, the, the quarterback on the screen? Uh, right here? No, we do not see the, the, not the that. Okay, let me stop share and pull share screen back up again. And we go here. Okay. Y'all see that now? Yes, sir. Yes. Quarterback yes. Awesome. Okay. All right, so we warm our quarterbacks up every day. We drop a little different than most people. I don't know if you've seen Sam Howell at, um, at North Carolina. We pedal drop. So we come up, we warm up, and here we are pedal dropping, just getting the feet warm. Uh, you know, he'll go down. We do a bunch of these. I'm just showing two right here. He'll come back, pedal again. Now start working hip flip just to work fast feet. So we kind of go through that progression there. We do quarter turns. So we do the old school quarter turn drill right here because when you're throwing RPOs, you, you've got to get your body turned coming out of those mesh fakes a lot of times to be able to do this kind of stuff. So we just get up there and quarter turn. And uh, the thing that you'll hear me say to them is I use the term, keep your base wire and shoulder width apart and clean your cleats in the ground. We don't want to come out of that ride and have a lot of air underneath our feet when we're turning because we're going to be late getting the ball out. So we're, dr we're drilling them getting around and just working their feet on a quarter turn, just something we do, especially on a heavy RPO day where we do these quarter turn drills. This is not an EDD, but this is something we do a couple of times a week. And it's just working, coming out of that ride, and you'll see how it ties into the next thing and um, going from there. Okay, we call this rock right here. So you see we got that bag between our legs. One of the keys to throwing RPOs and attachments especially attachments is having a little extra wide base and being able to, we don't use the term step to throw. We use the term strike the ground with your front foot because we want to get it down in the ground as quick as we can and get the ball out as fast as we can. So we put these bags between their legs and they work on just feeling their weight, trying to keep their knees inside their ankles to get the ball out. You know, so there's one going that way. They'll partner up coming back to each other. Boom. And they're just working on striking the ground. And you see their base is big, and they're not really taking a big, huge stride because we're teaching them how to, how to get their weight in between their body to be able to transfer their weight without getting out of sequence, with getting the front foot in the ground fast so the ball comes out fast. No wasted movement. Um, then we'll have a mesh with it. So we'll simulate just a little mesh, and they'll just pull and throw. So they got to get that ball from mesh from up. And it's not a hard mesh during warm-ups. It just kind of extend the ball so they can get used to getting it up in their ball carriage position and getting it out right there. So we, we, we do that. Sometimes we'll make them squeeze a, a soccer ball or something between their legs. Uh, this is more off-season work just because to be able to generate that power to make these throws, you have to be centered in the middle of your body so we get them to feel squeezing that ball together with the big base so they keep centered and they can transfer weight fast and get it out. Kind of something we do. All right, angle throws, everybody does them. You know, just a warm up drill, but I think it's important with the RPO because we talk about having cameras on your body. So right here, you know, we talk about an ankle camera. So one of the big things is, is this arm side foot, that Nike check's gotta get turned to the target. So we do these as a warm up right here, just just angle throws, just getting in position. Uh, right here, we're working a rocker drop, which is a quick game drop. So we're just position, boom, quick game back, rocker out, get it out. So we're trying to get it out of there fast. Okay, working on setting our hallway. Uh, we use the term, you're throwing down a hallway. You know, that's a young quarterback right there. Uh, Evan Myers gotten a lot stronger. The kid in the light blue was our starter this last year. But just setting that hallway with that arm side foot, getting in line with your target and throwing. You know, so we, we work on that, getting it out quick. Rhythm throws, just to get their feet right, boom. We pedal drop, like I said, with our shoulders open. So these are things we do. Now we got to turn the hallway. So the hallway's back, three steps, right side foot, open the ankle camera up to the target right there. Same thing here. Now he's going to turn it the other way. Hard turn, turn. Boom, get it out. Just limited movement, being as quick as possible with your movements and being as smooth as possible without having a whole lot of extra body parts. That's what, that's what speed release is. You know, the best throwers are winders. 
you know, so we, I teach these guys to wind the ball a little bit. We're a little bit of a winder. How do you get the ball out? You get it out quick with your lower body, not big, long strides, you know, striking the ground in front of you, being smooth, no wasted movement. So we try to work those every day. All right, let me put them in the phone booth. So here we go. Working, we're working those meshes out of the phone booth. Bam. Try to stay in the phone booth. Don't come out of it. Okay, because we can't have any vertical bounce back towards the line of scrimmage right here. So we're just working the throats. Working the phone booth. Boom. Right there. Tell them to over-exaggerate everything. Here we go. Working it to the right. And the big thing they're going to want to do is they're going to want to cheat and put it in a throwing grip. So we have to hammer them about, you still have to hand this ball off. You know, there's a possibility you're going to be given this ball. So you got to get it in a mentality of like the run mesh period where you're handing the ball off and then we got to turn. I don't care about laces on these things. If they find them, great. If they don't, we don't stress on it. It's just like throwing quick game. How quick can we get it out of our hand? You see they're making those quarter turns right there toward a turn, clean the cleats, get turned. Ride, eyes, boom, get out. So we work the heck out of these drills right here. And then we have some RPOs where we shuffle. So we go ride, shuffle. So bam, 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 turn, get it out. We're staying in that box. Right there, turn, get it out. Same thing to the left. Ride, eyes, get. And you really, when you get to the uh, to the team stuff, you really got to train their eyes on where they need to be. Uh, you know, we just try to work the hard turns right there, try to exaggerate getting turned and getting closed. Bam, get it out. Clean your cleats. You see there's not a lot of air underneath their feet. Get it out. Bam, right there. Okay. And then we're back to the line drops. That's kind of some of the stuff we do to train their bodies to be able to mimic some of this stuff you're about to see on film. Here in a second. Um, just so it's, what, are, what, are the, what are the pros that led you to transition into a pedal drop? Shoulders are open. You can see the whole okay. field. I mean, we always, I used to teach Neil with a kind of slightly shoulder like this. We call it a 45 degree shoulder. And I've taught that for years. And we would say okay. the striping eyes of your helmet downfield. And I played with it a couple of years. I actually played with it between TJC and here to be honest with you. And I just, shoulders are open. It takes a little bit of getting used to at first, but then once you get there, the kids love it. They're like, coach, I can see everything. I'm holding safeties in three by one. I can, I can, you know, if, my, if we're, in a, we're throwing a three by one drop back route, I can see that backside safety in his movement, which is gonna take me from front side to backside. You know, whereas if I close that shoulder off, like a lot of people are taught to do, you basically become blind to part of your field right there. Right, so I right. bought into it. Um, you know, you know they, they like it. At first, it's kind of awkward for them, but they really buy into it. I can, I can relate to that as a defensive guy, uh, kind of transition into a, a shuffle at cornerback as opposed to a back pedal because it allows them to see, you know, every route combination coming at them at once. And a lot of times we're not dealing with this uh, – you know, if you don't if you don't have the best athletes, sometimes you no want to kind of take the hit out of as much as possible. So uh, I can definitely relate. No doubt. Well, let's get into talking about a few of these right here. Um, let's see here. Let me pull this up. Our points down real quick. You know, just kind of how we practice. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to share screen real quick. We 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 lay everything out. I think that's important. Um, We'll go here, you know, practice schedule. Uh, you see right here, here's our practice schedule. Uh, can y'all see that? You know, here's a special teams period right here. There's attachments. So right there, that day we're working attachments. I usually write two down on the schedule. You know, we're going to work glance and, and um, you know, something, uh, maybe a C-gap attachment out in the flat. Right here, another special teams period. We're working bub and gum. Okay, and we got kickoff coverage going on. We might not have all of our dudes, but we've got all of our quarterbacks there, and they're getting many, many, many throws at this, you know, and so they're starting to rep this over and over again, which this year was really awkward for us because we didn't get to practice like a lot of teams did. So at times it was helter-skelter and trying to get these guys to, to buy into it. But, uh, you know, this, this, is, this is very valuable to us. Um, so 
you know, um, and when I do the share screen, where'd it go? Okay. So right there, practice schedule, um, you know, scripts, we script everything. So there's that day script, you know, everything's in there. There's that perimeter RPA period right there. So in there, you know, we've got some perimeter stuff going on. We've got a hub right there. We've got a bullet, which is an RPA. We've got a knife. So there's things that we're working in there that day. And then some of this stuff is just base runs. We got a dupe, we got a frog. These are, a lot of these things are, are code words for us that are different kinds of um, RPAs and stuff. So and RPOs, excuse me, and attachments. So we script everything, everything's hashed <laughs> out, down in distance and most of the stuff, it was a third and seven scale day. So we, we do a lot, of, a lot of that, making sure we can move and get, get reps in. We don't wanna be out there all day. All right, so some of the stuff that we do here, we're gonna to go to um, some film. I'll switch back over to this. We'll go back to this right here. Can y'all see that screen? We can. can see that? I'm gonna enlarge it just a little bit, but I gotta be able to see because I'm not using all this film. All right, so we'll go right here. So let's talk about our glance stuff real quick. This would be in the attachment family. Okay, um, when we go glance knife blade, all right, we are trying to put a defender in conflict with a lot of times some sort of outside run at him and making him have to be the D gap, C gap fitter and still play coverage behind it. So right here, this is, this is filmed from when I was at TJC. We're lined up against Kilgore. We're gonna run what we call right here, we're going trout left 16 zoom X glance. So we've tagged this guy to run a glance down here, but we've got a run, a wide zone run coming at him. And that's the conflict defender right there. Okay, so he's already pre-snap rotated down. He's skied down. Right now my quarterback's thinking, I'm fixing to throw this glance route. I'm going to put it in the gut. I'm going to throw it. He's already got a pre-snap idea. So here we go. He's down, don't move, yank it out, bam, replace him. We tell this guy right here, okay, a glance by base rule versus free access, we tell him five speed steps, three on the outside, and really what we tell him, and, and I stole this from Steve Sarkeesian, run to daylight. There is no angle from where he comes out of that break. He needs to create the best angle he can to be between the conflict defender and the high corner over him. So whatever that angle is, that's his angle coming out of that break. Sometimes these things come in there real fat and flat. Every once in a while, I've seen them go skinny. This guy's only job is to run this to daylight and protect the quarterback from the corner. Because quarterback ain't reading the corner. If he sees that conflict guy down, he's cutting this loose right here. His job is like being a basketball player. I got to be in between the basket and box this guy out, basically. But his job is to protect the quarterback from the corner every time we throw these. So when he comes up here, boom, protect him from the corner. Bam, that was stealing right there. Nice big game. We cut the dang uh, two eye loose backside. Didn't do a very good job of blocking him right there. I'm sorry, the uh, free tech front side cut him loose. Good thing we didn't hand it off. Probably got hit in the mouth. <laughs> but anyway, that, that's a glance one. That, that's a version of glance. All right, right here, okay. We call this keg, another glance situation. We went FIB right here into the boundary. Now, we built this in because we're when we throw these, we're not zoning all the way through. Our offense is on a count system. So this is seven, this is 16 zoom for us is the run play right here. If you look up to the top, what zoom tells the backside of this zone to do is they're gonna set those guys. They're gonna draw set those guys. They're not zoning. It's zone to the front side and it's man to the back side. Okay, we're going to cut the sixth defender loose, but it's not a defensive end or a C gap defender, it's a second level guy. Okay, because our quarterbacks tend to shuffle with these a little bit, we can't cut that end loose. I'm not going to ask my quarterback to stand back there, shuffle with the ball, cut a defensive end loose, and get hit in the mouth. Now, right here, we have a key screen built into it down at the bottom. We call this keg, this is key glance. Okay, he's getting pressure from the sixth guy, the sixth backer. He should have thrown the key screen out here. See down to the bottom, should have thrown the key. Doesn't throw the key, so he's going to cause himself problems by not throwing the key. 
because he's going to get hit right when he lets the ball go. And that should have never happened. Relief. Remember we talked about run release. Relief the pressure by throwing the key screen. We're in FIB. They've declared three over three to the boundary. Okay, but the safety's high, so this is a safe key screen to throw. We got two to block those guys. So it's a package play. You got a glance, you've got a zone run, and you've got a key screen all built into the same play right there. We could run this three or four times in a row, and we did it sulfur this year, and I'll show you a sulfur cut up of it in a second, and it not be the same thing two times in a row, all in the same play. Um, I'll hit another TJC one here. All right, right here, this was off a of one-back power, and then I'll get a sulfur, okay? Two high safety look. They've got a freaking nine tech, and we're running one-back power right here, and they're trying to make the high safety the C-gap fitter. See him coming down? Quarterback missed it. Should have thrown the glance right there. See the glance behind his head? Bam, okay. stealing. But fortunately, this running back made that safety <laughs> – Made that safety miss, and sometimes they make you right. You know what I'm saying? But he should have thrown that glance behind that dang safety's head. There comes the safety. There was the glance route right there. We missed it. Okay, and I like to put stuff on here sometimes that isn't always the prettiest. Uh, FIB into the boundary again. One more TJC. Okay, they went three, three and a half over three into the boundary right there. Safety's down. Yank it. Pull it. Run the daylight. Make a play. Run the daylight. You know, we try to do things like formation people. And to me as a quarterback, if I walk up here and I see the high safety in the divide all the way to the boundary side of the field, okay, because we went FIB here, I, you know, this is easy pickings for me pre-snap. It's me and this guy at this point. That's it. It's a two-man game. And that's what I'm talking about with the simplification of it. We gave him the pre-snap look to tell him, yeah, I don't know that I want to throw over here. I'm three and a half into the boundary outside the hash. I'm one-on-one -on -one here. If this guy freaking flat foots or backs up, I'm going to hand it off. If he's the fitter, if he's the D-gap player, then I'm going to yank it out of there and let my dude run the daylight and make a play. So, uh, you know, to me, these are very easy things to do. See if I can find a sulfur one from this year. More TJCs. TJCs. Okay, here's one down the goal line versus uh, Lafayette High this year. We come down. We, uh, we're running tight zone. C-gap tight zone, six-man tight zone. We call it blunt. We've got our X receiver down here to the bottom. We go to the wide. Okay, right here. And one of the things we tell him, and he did not do a good job of this, is, okay, where's my space at now down on the goal line? Okay. I'm on the three-yard line, and I've got 13 yards of field to play with. So we teach these receivers what we call ABC steps. They're, they're release techniques. And this kid would get underneath my skin. He's a great player, first team all district this year. But he'd get under my skin because I'd tell him, hey, you got time to win the route. That's what we're talking about, win the route. You, you, you don't have to be any, in a, any hurry to get anywhere. Win the route. And so he should have worked this guy a little bit more and it was separated, but he works him enough, works him enough to get inside leverage, boom, pull it, yank it, touchdown. And we've got a tight zone run on. Our tight end's wrong right here. He should be cutting off the C-gap. Thank God we got it out of our hands. Which our quarterback was pretty astute. He, he knew pre-snap. He told me coming off the field, coach, the safety was already cheating. Inside right there, I knew I had the one-on-one, -on -one, I took it. So, um, let's see, one more here. That's a practice clip. Okay, here's a knife. Seventh guy's down in the box. Seventh guy's in the box already. Quarterback should have pulled it right now. And he should have been working those two to the top up there because we've got a double move coming in here now. This is what we call blade. So we've got a, a glance or a slant on the back side. We've got a glance by two and a fin route by three coming in there. Okay, should have pulled it. Seventh defender's already down. We only have six to block, so we have to use that count mentality. Should have worked these two. Once that movement went there, we should have banged this glance post on the back side off of by pre-snap alignment. Should have been working the X back here. 
But the X runs a lazy route, not expecting the ball too. So just, just some things to put people in conflict. Let's see. Uh, here, here we go, trips right here. We run a stubby concept, we hand it off. Felt like there was an empty alley over there, so he hands it off this time. We circle the defense, get a nice little run out of it. So we've got a little three-man concept here on the back side. We're running the glance to the top. So that's an example of giving it right there. There's no, there's no force player in the alley, so we handed it off right there. Nice little 12, 13-yard gain, whatever it was, to get it started. Safety's inside the hash. I mean, don't overthink it. Safety's inside the hash. Nobody's in the alley. Hand the ball off. Let that guy go be a playmaker. Don't overthink it. That's kind of some bland stuff. Um, C-gap attachments. You heard me talk about that a minute ago. All right. We call this little concept Archie. All right. We're in 12 personnel right here. Um, C-gap attachments. So this is a zone read. We we're actually zone reading this. All right, so go back to what we said a minute ago. Pitch key, pull key, pull key, pitch key. Okay, pull key is the C gap defender. Pitch key is the D gap defender. Okay, so the quarterback here is reading C gap, and basically what we tell our quarterbacks on these zone replays is if if he can't tackle the back, it's like beer. If he can't tackle the back, hand the back the ball. I I, I don't really get. You, know, you get guys that coach shoulders and how much – that's too much thinking going on right there. Get the ball in the gut, and can this C-gap guy tackle this running back right here? Okay? So right here, he didn't feel that he could tackle him. Boom, hands it off. Bam, touchdown. Okay? Now, had he pulled it – and I've got a couple more shots of this on here. Had he pulled it, there goes the trigger right there. There's the D-gap defender. Had he pulled – say this guy had heel line hard right here. Okay? He pulled. Now, if that guy's running to pitch, he's inserting, replacing that guy on his own read. So, uh, good little deal right there. We call it Archie. Uh, second shot of it right here. Let's go to uh, TJC practice. I mean, uh, Saul for practice film. Now, like I said, our defense plays a lot of man coverage. So, we get a deal here where we know. These two dudes probably are responsible for these two dudes right here, man, in this situation. He is arcing to what we call two past the ID. That is the tight end's job on this. What does that mean? In our, in our terminology, this play is 13. That's the ID. That's one past the ID. So the O-line is taking care of what? One, two, three, four, five in the count right there. That's their dudes. That's who they're zoning. That's the read key. That's the pitch key right there. So we're going to arc and block. We're actually going to load this. It ends up being a load versus this defense. So should this guy heel line, we're going to have a tight end probably wide open out in the flat to with nobody on him unless this guy runs from depth to make the play right there. Okay? But here's the beauty of this versus man teams. When those guys go to the flat, and we don't run this well. This was early in practice. I think this was like our second week of practice after the hurricane. We don't block it very well, but look what happens to the backside C-gap. You get a little bit of a widening with that end on that tight end trying to arc, and that goes out the back door. There's no fitters there because they're playing man coverage on those dudes. And we could do a better job up front here of staying square and working this double up to cut this retrace back off or U-turn on that guy. You know, it's early on in the deal, but you get the backside C-gap, so eyes, it's eye candy. I mean, it's eye candy right there. You know, but those guys have to defend that, and there they go. You're out the back door. So that's Archie again. We run it uh, in a scrimmage versus Westlake. I'm going to show it one more time. Once again, C-gap read. Quarterback, this is a bad one. Quarterback pulls it right here. He shouldn't. Who's the C-gap defender? There he is right there, right? He can't make that tackle. No way he can tackle that back from right there. It's like Veer. Okay? So, boom. He hands that off, the running back's still running. But he pulls it and gets himself into no man's land right here. And now he's in trouble. He tries to spit it late out there to the tight end, shouldn't have. Should have handed that thing off. That guy ain't making that tackle. Look at him, he's coming up the field. 
doesn't turn his shoulders until he's two to three yards up the field. He ain't making that tackle. Hand the ball off. When in doubt, hand it off. You know what I'm saying? But we get some eye candy here. So once again, pull key. We're going to arc to two pass the ID. Where's the ID? One, two. He's arcing to the third one. Okay, so he's handling that third guy. Everything we do is counts. Okay, so in this case right here versus this two shell look, we should have handed it off anyway because I'm always trying to clue those guys into two on the roof. You probably got a light box, hand the ball off. Probably should have gave it on that aspect. This was our scrimmage, you know, early on, no spring, no all season, that kind of stuff. So he's overthinking this right here. But in reality, seeing this up here, he shouldn't even worried about the C-gap. Unless he could have tackled him, he should have handed this thing off or pulled it and kept it. But at that point right there, there's no key. Guys up the field, hand it to the back. Back's going to go score right there. Or he's going to get you a big gain right there. So that's kind of, um, you know, a C-gap attachment. We're, we're on the move. We're, we're attaching something out into the flat to a C-gap run or a C-gap read run. Okay, tight zones, usually the one that we hit the most on that, but it's a good little deal, okay? Uh, third thing, you know, I just picked a couple of things that we do a lot of. We call these frogs. Okay, our tailback is the F. So now we're going what we call key two, key three runs, okay? And usually it's a quarterback tight end run with a key defender. Well, right here, it's key four, actually. But because it was a two shell, we told him, go ahead and key three this week. So we're going to block most dangerous one, two, three on their most dangerous one, two, three. And we're going to key this guy to whether we throw the swinger out here to the back or whether we run the football play. We've got this tied in with our version of buck sweep, which we call horn right here. He lets it go. The backer triggers. He punch punches, looks at it, gets out, runs horn back the other way. Putting that backer in conflict. This is a frog. We motion them out. Right here versus our defense in practice. And I've got a couple of them of us this year in games. Right here, boom, motion. Backer triggers. Okay, 20 series play. So our tight ends blocking the end. We tell we don't like running this versus a nine tech. It's tough. But we tell him if he's a nine tech, keep him a nine tech, play with a heavy inside hand, wash him the sideline like wide zone, pullers are going to turn up inside this. Okay, so right here, this was early on, and they actually did a good job. As he keeps him outside, pullers turn up inside right there, quarterback pulls it, he rats that thing out, pretty good job by our backside guard right there, seeing that back to redirect. We get up on the corner with the second guy, nice little run for the quarterback. Okay, here's, here's one out of two by two. Same pin and pull play. Sends him. Didn't feel like that guy triggered. So now who's the key three? One, two. There's the key three right there. He's keying the third defender from the sideline. Doesn't move. Swing it out there. Let him go make a play. We didn't do a good job of blocking the perimeter right there. But that's a key, you know, key screen, uh, a key two. Two, a couple of more of them. Uh, power. So now we've got power read on right here, but we're going to swing the back out there to get in there. So we push. We're keying two. Why? Because we got one wide receiver to block. So we key two right here. Quarterbacks know who's blocking who. We're keying the Sam right here. We're key two. He doesn't trigger. We tell him if he can't keep pace with that guy on the swing, throw the swing. Make him play it from a trail position. Boom, throws the swing out there. We block the perimeter, get the ball to an athlete in space, let him go. Had that Sam triggered right there and pushed to three, quarterback would have pulled it down. We had a nice little quarterback power play coming right here. Blocked up pretty decent. So it's a good way to get your plus one runs in, too. Yeah, plus one run with a quarterback. Make them defend that. How are they going to defend that quarterback? Now, who's accounting for that guy? Plus one runs. Um, let's see here. One more. This is it right here. Yeah. Versus uh versus Como this year. All right, we trigger here. Now, once again, cluing them into what? How many safeties are on the roof? Two. Two. We got we got a light box, man. So 
this is one of those deals where they don't really trigger, and he could have swung it out here. My quarterback likes to run the ball. <laughs> He's one of those kind of dudes. So he felt like he came on the sideline after he said, Coach, it's two shell look. I just pulled it down, and we're blocking counter now. Same thought mentality. So it's key three again. Three's in the box. But we've got enough people. He knows the scheme that we have six guys to block six right here. So schematically, we're good. We also have a soft edge right here because we don't really have, and let's look at it from behind. We have this guy aligned. So if he spills it, if three spills it, there's no edge right there. If this gets spilled to the outside, if he wrong shoulders this and spills the heck out of it, there's nothing to fit out here. We've got a nice little alley to run in. So we try to clue him into those kind of things. Um, you know, how many safeties are up there? Is the box light or heavy, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, last thing I'm going to touch on here. Okay, hubs and gums. Okay, hub for us kind of goes into the RPO mentality now, more than an attachment. It still has a run built into it. Okay, so here we have a hub on. What a hub is, is it is bubble with a gift hitch on the back side. So on this side, we're bubbling. On this side, we've got a gift hitch. Okay, so we've got this hub on here. Now we took our guy in what we call hook motion. You've seen Alabama do this five million times. He felt like the box was still light. He handed it off, okay? Had he not, he could have turned, and this receiver down here to the bottom's wrong. We're not gonna run this hitch versus press. We're gonna convert this to a, to a, a, a more route or a go route and, and take our shot up there and I have a shot at TJC of us throwing a touchdown pass on the conversion, okay? But that's a hub. Nice. Okay, here we tie it in. We've got a hub with a C-gap read. So we've got C-gap read and we're hubbing. So he could have took the gift hitch up here to the top if he wanted to. C-gap read, pull, or he could have thrown the bubble. There's a lot of things going on in one play, but it's, it's the same football play. We run 13 Bible, 13 blunt. We, we run those plays over and over again. We've only got about six or seven run plays. That's it. We run them over and over again, and we attach all this different stuff to it. He decided here by the look that he wanted to go with the C-gap read, got heel lines, he pulls it, boom. Here's one right here, goal line, press. Film's kind of cut off a little bit. If you look to the top of the screen, that should be the gift hitch up there to the top. It's got press. What are we going to do? We're going to take that press throw and let it make a play. We're running 13 blunt up front. We're going to get that thing out so quick, and you know what I'm saying, that we're not going to sit there and get hit. It's all quick game. So he takes it, he lets his athlete make a play. Throws the 50-50 ball up there. He knew that guy was, was better than that other guy. Gave him a shot to make a play, boom, touchdown. Um, one more bub here, and then we'll hit a couple of gums real quick. Um, you know, we went unbalanced right here. Talk about creating um, conflict, okay? We've got a bub on with H right here, which is a key. Three. Why? Because we have one, two to block. So we're keying the third defender. Well, he's already hipped out of the box. So our quarterback right here knows he's got a light box. They end up spilling this counter. So they spill. We log. Trail puller comes around. Well, that guy's the D gap fitter. And he's trying to play a bubble at first. He's, he's not sure what he's looking at. We get an easy kick on him by the tight end. And we get right up inside it. Now, had that guy been a little tighter to the box, had that guy been in the box, had that guy been in the core, and our quarterback felt like he had good leverage out here, he could have just opened up and threw this guy the bug pre-snap right there. And it's all about keying. So it's key three. One, two, three. Teach your guys to, to, to know who they're looking at. When we throw these bugs and stuff like that, we say key three, key two, whatever it is, you know, and they, they know to just count. I mean, counting's easy, you know. For me, it is anyway. Uh, last thing we'll, we'll leave you with here. How much time do I got, uh, Neil? Coach, you're good. You, you oh, have good? Yep. Okay, good. All right. So we'll hit a couple other things here then. So um, 
we've got what we call gums. All right, what a gum is, is we got bubble, we got gum. Let me show you a base one first before I show you that one with motion. All right, so a gum is, you see what he's doing, the slot right there, he's firing at that guy, now he's going to pedal. Okay, so he's going to be a laid atlas. This is what we call a D-gap attachment. Okay, a D-gap attachment or reading the seventh defender. We're blocking our blunt play right here. All right, so we're blocking 13 blunt. That's a six-man deal. Tight end's cutting off the backside C-gap defender. He's got C-gap defender. Whether he comes from the opposite side and slices him or whether he's already aligned there, he's cutting off the backside C-gap defender. Como's got a six-man box right here, two on the roof. Once again, my guy being the guy that he was this year, wish I had him back for a second year. Uh, led our district in passing, made second team all district, which with some of the dudes we got in our district, so a really good honor. Um, he, he, he knows he's got a light box, so we end up running blunt right here, and he just hands it, we take it out the back door. So it's just tight zone blunt. We, we've got six to block six. We get uh, a little bit of a pressure here. We collapse it all down, do an okay job of blocking it. It ain't the greatest job in the world. Our right tackle gets up on that backside backer, eats him up. Tight end collapses that C-gap defender down. Running back does a good job of staying square where he can get out the backside C-gap, and there we go. Now, had he felt like, you know, maybe it was an eight-man front, maybe they had brought this guy down, went to a four-man surface, safety's already skied down to that side, he could have started playing games with this guy if the C-gap defender, which we're loading the C-gap defender and reading the C-gap defender at the same time. So your pull key is your C-gap defender that we're loading, your pitch key, is the seventh guy okay so that's kind of a crazy deal but it's like load option basis and what we tell him is because you're going to see a second one where the c gap defender comes outside so he couldn't have pulled so right here he just decided that he was going to hand it off two safeties on the roof collapse it down take it out the back door let's see let me go back Okay, so here's another one. Should be a gum. Yeah, H gum. Okay, once again, two shell look. This time, C gap defender becomes that stack backer out there. And we still load him. Turn, tight end turns back on him, sorts him out. Right tackle tries to collect that defensive end and bring him with him. We got a little crease right there. We take it up, we screw up. We should be doubling up to that backer that's coming outside. We should have a tag block up to that backer. They insert, and they don't come off the double and let that guy run wide, but he doesn't make the play. Thank God. We should have been doubling. We should have been out out to that guy right there. But once again, had he felt like this guy and his leverage was a little bit tighter and maybe they, you know, the C gap, he could have come out clean, could have spit it out here to this guy late. Um, I did have one on here with a spitting it out. I don't know what I did with it. For big yards. I mean, you hand it off, you put that guy in conflict, just late triple option. Um, since I got a little more time, another C gap attachment, we call it mole. Um, it's the same deal, bringing the tight end from the other side, pull off, uh, off the C gap defender. And we just tell our quarterbacks if you pull, okay, pitch key. Pitch key, pull key. Pull key's here because of the front. Pitch key's way the hell back here, all right? But he doesn't feel comfortable with this tight alignment getting up in there. He knows the tight end's out flanking everybody right there, so he just pops it out there to him. And we tell him if that guy redirects off the pull, we tell him it's just like throwing a screen, man. Get high and light. So you see what he's doing? He's just kind of getting away and flipping it out there, creating his own space. And we got the tight end out in the flat. Could have handed this off depending on what, you know, what he felt like with the C gap. He probably could have handed this off. They're not really screaming and heel lining right there. But one thing we talked about this week because of this alignment when we got it right here, if the alley was clean and we had two to block one and a half, if you can pull it without getting blew up and blown up, go ahead and pull it and throw it out there. And, and so he did right here. Show you another one of these against New Iberia. Right here, 
I mean, Nish probably should have pulled it. Um, tight, the, the, the DN's not really squeezing hard. He's not really coming down hard. God dang it. Bad. Yes, I need my remote. Um, they got two on the roof right here. They got the corner back. So we're in this compressed or this dosed alignment right here. We actually tell these receivers, when you're dosed like that and you're blocking one, two most dangerous, if that guy's no threat, we double perimeter guys. They don't do a really good job of it right here because, like I said, we're, we're learning all this on the fly. But watch, they're going to double that guy. Should have pulled it and flipped it out there to the flat to the tight end. Because he's behind the line of scrimmage. We call that a line route. He's running, he's running the one-yard line route right there. I think, uh, you know, Alabama calls them sliders. Uh, you, you know, uh, it's just a good little way to put him in conflict because this backer's got a run fit right now. I mean, he's, he's getting clear as day. Boom. Well, who's got to run the pitch now? That guy's got to go to pitch from all the way up there. Guy's got a long way to go to get to pitch. And, Coach, you're going you're gonna to go to that compressed set in order to, to create a high-low situation and, and get that guy? Up. Yeah, and, and really, it's a little bit of both. We'll throw these, Neil, out of regular formations and regular alignments, too. We, we had some other things we were doing that week out of that compressed set in the drop-back passing game. So when we look at formations, when we game plan, we try to pick formations that we can do multiple things out of. I don't want to get up there and be a one-trick pony. Oh, every time they get in that compressed set, they're throwing Y mole out there. You know, uh, right. we had some passing game stuff that we were running that week. We had a couple other run game things that we were doing out of that that week. But I do like the compressed formations. We get in them a lot. Uh, I've been getting in bunch. I mean, hell, I was getting in bunch at Redemptors back in 2005, you know, yeah. running uh, freaking uh, the old vet toss that everybody runs in America. You know, I like the compressed formations because how are they going to play it? You know, if they're off and soft, you've got a nice little, you know, edge out here. And we tell our guys, man, if that guy's not a threat, go double that dude. Go double yeah. right there. You know, make that damn safety run from high and go tackle that freaking tight end. Make, make him run. And he's pedaling out of there. Like, he sees those two dudes coming at him. He's actually backpedaling out of there because he's a deep third player in this coverage. And he's a cover three player. Right. Uh, they're in cover three right there. So, He's got two guys coming off the ball at him, you know. And, I, you know, I asked, I asked um, Jacob, our quarterback, why he didn't pull this. He said he didn't feel like the guy squeezed. And, you know, I tell him when in doubt, hand it off. And if the guy can't tackle the back, well, you see the end right there. He's kind of boxing it right there. A little bit. He's not hardcore. Um, I just told him, think about next time we come back to it. And we ended up not getting back to it because we, we kind of took it on the chin versus New Iberia. They were freaking good. And, we didn't play our best ball that night. But I said, you know, if we get back to it and you get that same cover three alignment right there, then pull it, get high and light to the top to get away from that end in case he comes to you and get it to that guy out in the flat, you know. And, and, and we just didn't get back to it that game. But that's what we call a mole. And we call it a mole because he's coming underneath the – and he's moling underneath the line of scrimmage. It's coming from the opposite side right there. Well, is that district right. or what, Coach? Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Uh, I mean, you start with Acadiana, and uh, those guys are those guys are pretty good, you know. Um, <laughs> it, it's 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 something else, you know. Um, definitely a district. Now, doing all this, I'm gonna leave you leave you with a couple of things here. Doing all this, you got to throw some play actions every once in a while. You can't you can't live in the world of just. Um, you know, throwing RPOs, you can get your quarterback hit. Uh, right here, you know, we're working a, a play action. We actually build our play actions. This is something that I, I stole off of our runs. We don't create – we can have a play action off of any run we have by changing one word term. Now, the techniques change up a little bit. But if you see right here, we've got 12 blunt calls. 12 would be the run version of it. When we put north or south in front of that, we've now changed that to play action. We've changed that to a play action, okay, and they understand their responsibility off of that. So we can throw play actions off of any run we have. You see the back. It's, it's not a hardcore fake. He's got four off the edge from side to side. If there's no four, his job's to make the tight end hold. He's going to fit off the tight end where he can. And in reality, it's just slide protection with these five guys right here when we go blunt with it. But you get those safeties and you're giving them that look and that safety flat foots and you just got to throw, you got to throw play actions every once in a while. 
You know, you, you got to go over the top. Um, here's one at TJC last year. We're gonna we're gonna throw a post with the slot right here. We go uh, what we call 13 base or south base. This is our base protection right here. Tight end kind of almost screws this up. He should keep cross facing on that dang uh, safety right there. See him? And he takes it back over the top right there. Stay flat, grab the safety, almost like you're running old school wide cross right here. And then we're going to bend that freaking um, – bend that slot receiver right up in there for a big completion. But you got to throw play actions too so you can get it down the field a little bit more every once in a while. We still get the completion, but man, tight end. I, I ripped his ass when he came to the sideline and just, hey man, you got to keep crossing that safety's face. You know, he does that. Mm -hmm. There you go, run to daylight, flatten out. See, Eddie ran to daylight and that tight end not been there. He had a nice little window to catch that in. He makes a hell of a catch right up there, big game. But you got to throw play actions. You can't just live in the RPO world. You need to have play actions off your base runs. You need to find a simple way to get to it. You know, and that, that's a different discussion. Obviously, I just threw that in there just because it, it, it's important. Um, the last thing out of this today, and I don't know where it went. Where did it go? Okay. Man beaters. All right. And here we are working them here. This is uh, – this is a little deal. We're in perimeter drill, and, yeah, the quarterback's about to get hit in the mouth because we're bringing pressure. We don't have the O-line up there. No big deal. But this is what we call scrapes. Uh, we tempo it off. You know, we're getting man. Bam, right here, he missed the fade, obviously. Uh, we have a fade to the front side. We like to run this down the goal line a little bit. Right here, we have 13 blunt tied into it. So he could have handed this off. This is very early on. It's like our first week of practice. Uh, but you see, and we got better at this. We didn't run it a lot during the regular season because we just didn't see a whole crap ton of man coverage. But right here, basically the slot's picking. He, he's picking for the outside receiver. And we should go one to two right there. So that, that's something we do as a, as, a, as a man beater every once in a while, you know. Uh, to do those things. Here's, here's a uh, sample of it in the game versus Como. Um, he throws the fade back here. We got 13 blunt called. Picks a low snap up. Once again, getting back to my previous argument with this receiver right here, work his oh. ass right there. You got time. You're on the dang eight-yard line. You don't want to run out of the back of the end zone catching a fade. So. We have these things we call A and B and C steps. They're like power steps. It's like a newer version of foot firing almost. Um, and we tell them to work the hell out of them, gain the leverage. At some point, that high school DB is going to lunch. If you're sitting there freaking power stepping in front of him, he's going to lunch. So if you're A stepping him, B stepping him, C stepping him, he's going to lunch. Right here, he should have C stepped the guy, which meant he should have went bam, 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 and then went and set him away from where he was going. He just takes off, makes it tough on the quarterback because he's six foot three. He's like, oh, I'm just going to take off on this guy. And we had a shot. We, we, don't, we don't catch it. You know, but he made it hard on himself when he could have just won over the top. This is scrapes again. Might have been able to throw the slant down here to the bottom. But just a good little, you know, change of pace. There's other man beaters. This is just one that we like. So, but these are all packaged plays. I mean, there's a run, you know what I'm saying? And there's, there's the ability to throw the ball to the perimeter on simple routes. So, and that, 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 that's a bad thing, you know. Don't put your, don't put your guys – we're getting a lot of formations, and, and, and I've talked to coaches that say, you know, I don't like getting in a lot of formations because I don't know how the defense is going to align. I like getting in a lot of formations because I'm going to take advantage of once they align what they do by these packaged plays. You know, and, and that, that's just kind of what we do. I'll, um, you know, we, we, we try to get our kids um, – I'm going to share screen again. We try to get our kids the ability to have good things to look at here. So, that, you know, this is some playbook stuff. This is our – this is this is our blade concept right here. We've got it tied in with that. So, we, we, we try to give them the things to look at where they have, you know, those kind of deals to – to, uh, to be able to see, you know, all of our run game is in here. Uh, 
can share this right here. Like right here, can y'all see that? Not yet, Coach. Uh, you know, um, there, there's there's our run. There, there's a run play with all the rules for the for the O line. You know, and um, you know, just we, we try to give our kids as much as they can get because we do ask a lot out of them. We ask them to do a lot of things. Uh, I think if you teach it in a certain way, you know, it, it's pretty simple. And the thing I like about the RPO and attachment stuff is it kind of becomes almost like one on one basketball. Okay, so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to look at this guy right here and I'm going to decide whether I'm handing the ball off or whether me and this guy are playing two on two right here. And that's it. You know, and I think that's the beauty of it. And, and we have a bunch of other RPOs. There's a lot of stuff we do. That's kind of the simpler stuff. And we really, you know, didn't get a chance to get to a whole lot of it this year. I mean, we played five games. We, we practiced for one week for Lafayette High. So we kind of had to kind of had to do things as simple as we can. But uh, that's just a little bit of what we do. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but, you know, that's what we do. And, and um, you know, it's uh, it's been good for us. So. Man, I, I've, I've enjoyed it, Coach. And um, I, I agree with you with the formation stuff. You know, to, to me, you have two choices. You either teach a kid a lot of plays or you have a few plays and you align them in a different position. I think it's easier just to manipulate the defense and teach your kid uh, fewer plays. And so I can – as a defensive guy – I can I can definitely relate to that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that Coach, at what point in your career did you? What point in your career did you become? Because uh, uh, you know, big in the RPOs. Because you used to be a a vertical passing game guy, correct? Uh, I mean, I'm still a big drop back guy. I mean, if you look at our drop back passing game, we 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 we, we do it. You know, we throw a lot of it. Um, I think where the RPOs came into play is we don't throw as much quick game anymore. Because the RPOs and the – you know what I'm saying? And there was one I didn't show y'all we call shirt where we throw a go in and out tied in the power coming to it. And we're just leveraging the sand. We're going to throw that go out out there versus if the sand's tight, the sand expands, we're handing the ball off because we've got a six-man box. And so, you know, um, it's just a part of what we do. Um, we practice heavy at it, um, you know, but we, we still drop back pass. We still change launch points and naked and boot, and we still sprint. I mean, you know, I still have old school Louis right. Cook trail out in my offense from from 1996, running in a USL back in the day. You know, we still we still do some of that stuff. So, um, you know, I just think it's an answer in the run game. If you're going to be a base 11 personnel team, you have to have answers for that free hitter, whoever that free hitter is. Wherever that guy comes down in the box, you have to have an answer, and you can't just force feed it. Now, one thing I will tell you we do is nothing is automatic in our offense. Everything's a tag. Uh, I find quarterbacks are greedy sometimes. And so you give them that tag, and you come off the sideline, and it's a six-man box or a five-and-a-half-man box, and you're like, why the hell do you throw that thing off, man? Throw it, you know, throw it. And I'll go, you know, I just felt like, you know, so <laughs> when we want to run it, there is no RPO tag or no attachment tag on the end of these plays. So, right. So, anyway, but um, that's just a little bit of what we do, man. Good deal, Coach. Man, I, I really appreciate it. Um, and if, if anybody you, um, you know that didn't get to tune in because we had some guys say, hey, I'm not going to be able to make him. Am I, I going to be able to catch it? Yes, it will be on the YouTube okay. channel. Uh, so they can just still subscribe and, and uh, pick it back up. And um, and if uh, at any time you ever it, looking for anything, Coach, or, or, or need anything, you can hit us up, you know, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. We're on Spotify, Apple Play. This will be um, available on all of those also. So, uh, man, I, I just – I can't thank you enough and, and – we appreciate yep. you having, having Yeah, if y'all, uh, you know, want me to do, you know, I, I love talking ball. So, if you get to Same here. want me to hit another one, I got some other things that, you know, drop back pass and stuff, whatever, you know. So. Absolutely. Absolutely, Coach. Well, hey, we'll be in contact and uh, be in touch, and I appreciate you uh, coming on, Coach. All right, man. Thanks. Y'all take care. Right. Yep, you too.